Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm doing a video every day, so make sure you come back again tomorrow. All right, today's video, we're going to talk about transistors. So this could be BJTs or MOSFETs or JFETs or whatever they may be. They're all very much the same kind of thing, but they work in different ways. So a standard BJT transistor is based on current going through its base pin. A MOSFET is triggered by voltage going through its gate pin. Some transistors will latch, so when it's been triggered, it will kind of stay triggered until it's been reversed to turn it back off again. They kind of do that with MOSFETs. I'm going to demonstrate that in a second. But first we'll look at the BJTs. So here's a really small one, little SOT23. That is a MMBT3904, which is an MPN transistor. Here is a standard TO92 3904 transistor. And here's a 2SD718, and that's a nice big transistor here. Obviously, this is the modern equivalent to this one. Bit of a difference in size there. So let's just quickly show you how these things work. So let's just do some testing to determine the basic pinouts of these things. So we'll start with this little one, which you won't be able to see me doing. So we go across like this, there we go. There's got a junction there, die junction. So one of those pins I'm testing on is the base. Let's spin it around a little bit. There's the other one. So the red probe here is on the base, which is on the left pin of this particular device. All right, so that's measuring a die junction as you would normally get. And if I reverse those to the black on that same pin, instead you get nothing on the meter. We'll do this one here. Now the pin out for this is emitted by a letter, so the base on this one's different, it's in the middle. So if I stick that probe in the middle, there's a junction in that way. Try and do this. And there's a junction the other way. I can probe it. Bigger device. I'm not sure what the pin out is on this one, I'm not sure what it is. Okay, here we've got something there ready. Junction that way, junction that way, there we go. So the, the end probe is on the base again. And if I reverse it, you should see nothing. Now these are MOSFETs. These work a little bit differently. So a MOSFET, once it's triggered, depending on the type anyway, once it's triggered, it will often stay triggered. So if I go to this one here, I'm going to use this one for example. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you're interested in these videos. So if I go from there to there, nothing. There to there, nothing. Okay. Start the other end. No. There, nothing. Oh, we've got this junction there, there we go, 560 there. We've got something showing up here. Okay, that's interesting. So let's do here again. There to there. Oh look, now we've got a short. If I reverse it, still a short, don't move it around. That's the drain and source, so you've got gate drain source. And drain and source are practically interchangeable. Essentially the same thing, to be honest. Right, you can see there, now I've got a short before I was getting that. Reverse those around. Now it's open, and that way it's got some leakage. All right, let's leakage that way. Reverse the probes around, still nothing. Touch on there. Now you've got to close. And it will stay that way until I discharge the gate, and then it's open again. This one here will do the same thing. I'm not sure what the pinout is on this one. Let's go there. It's just easy to hold it down. Nothing. Nothing. Be nice to nothing and reverse the probes. Let's do there. In this case, the tab is one of connections. Nothing and nothing. Okay, try there. Nothing. Oh, look, now we've got it. Now it's off. So I've got a black probe on the tab there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Stick the black probe on here. Move it back. Now you've got it turned on. Nothing. Off again. All right. So this must be the gate. This pin here. Because this connection is switching on and off between those two. That's why MOSFETs you have to turn them on and turn them off. The turning off is usually done by like a pull down resistor or something like that to take away any stray voltage or anything. Just could be a pull down or a pull up resistor depending on the type of MOSFET. MOSFETs can be static sensitive as well, so be mindful of that. My desk is grounded, so I'm not worried about that in my case. But if you, your desk isn't grounded, you don't have a grounded mat like this is, a grounding mat. All right? If you don't have something like this, then you have to make sure that you're careful about static. Otherwise, you might blow your MOSFETs up. Uh, mostly JFETs, I think, are the most sensitive ones. So to go into the more technical aspect of this, which you don't actually need to know to use a transistor, is a transistor is made up of a PN junction. Now, it could be a P with an N with another P, which make it a PNP transistor, or it could be an NPN transistor, which is an N with a P with an N. Right, so P is a sandwich layer. 
MPN is more common than PNP and the basic function there is the polarity of the transistor, the way it works. So with an MPN transistor, to turn it on, you'd put a positive voltage on the base relative to the emitter. So that's at 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts, I was mentioning before when I was doing the other videos. So 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 volts, be typical for a BJT transistor. And that will trigger enough current through the device to turn it on. And not truly a switch, they are a kind of linear switching. So if you want to have a proportion of that fully on value you can actually do a partial switch on you don't have to use the full switch on and you can actually you know partially transfer voltage through however the transistor will then get hot basically the more fully on it is the less heat will be dissipated in the transistor because there's less loss through it so on a NPN transistor you're doing a positive on the base in order to pull the transistor on relative to the emitter right so it's 0 0.6 volts above the emitter voltage Wherever the emitter may be, it might be running the emitter, not a ground, but it could be running the emitter at 4 volts, which then means you could use 5 volts to turn it on, well, 4.7 volts to turn it on fully. So there's little tricks like that too, you can actually float the emitter up in order to make it easier in some ways. Now the PNP transistors are the opposite of that. The base is negative triggered, so the emitter will be on a positive supply rail, could be like an 8 volt rail or 5 volt rail, whatever, and you're pulling the base pin down below that rail by 0.7 volts or so. Now the actual switch on voltage will depend upon the data sheet of, of you know, what it says that transistor uses. Sometimes it's 0.6, sometimes it's 0.7, sometimes it could be something else. There are even digital transistors. They've got some other stuff in there which means you can actually use logic levels on them instead. There's also Darlington transistors which are basically two transistors in a single package which give you much more gain. Really high amplification ratios. So those are something you can also get, it's what Darlington transistor is, it's multiple transistors in the same package. But with MOSFETs you're basically triggering with a voltage rather than a current, which is what a BJT is based on. But if you know what the voltage is for the trigger voltage on a BJT, the current's going to be basically right, because it's in relation, you know. Current and voltage are relational, so if you go for a voltage on a pen, it's as easy to manage that. With MOSFETs the voltage could vary quite significantly, so in that case you need to make sure you look at the data sheet and see what the voltage is for that particular MOSFET you're using, because it might be 3 volts, it could be 50 volts, depends on the MOSFET. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you found it interesting, check out the playlist of the entire video series, and I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye.